Some say the Asbury revival is real, but some are skeptical. Where do you stand? What, what is this, do you think? Right, what is this? That's what we can, I mean, that's the question, right? And um, a, a theme or a Bible verse that we've all been sharing with each other is Habakkuk 1. And the Lord says, look at the nations and watch for I'm doing something in your day that you wouldn't believe if you were told. And it's happening and we can hardly believe it. Well, it seems remarkable. I mean, so many stories, you see them and you think that's very different. I'm not quite sure what it means, but it's worth learning more. So my understanding is this began in a completely conventional service and a boy got up and started talking about his own flaws and then it just something changed in the atmosphere and it never ended is that fair that's completely what happened um so here at asbury university three mornings a week we have chapel at 10 a.m sharp the whole student body gets together and we we sing praise to the lord and we hear a message from a speaker and for seemingly no reason at first, on, on Wednesday, February 8th, it didn't end. And that's that's kind of the logistical side of what's been going on. And then, you know, on the on the deeper side of things, what's been happening here since Wednesday is there's a there's a young army of believers who are rising to claim Christianity, the faith, as their own, as a young generation and as a free generation. And that's why people can't get enough. Many people have the idea that they're going to pray in a revival. And other people say, revival will come whether you pray or not. I'm not in either one of those camps. But I know this. When I see men and women and young people all over the world praying for an awakening, to me, that is the first fruits of revival. And I can count on the fact that he who gave those first fruits will bring in the full some well-known Christian YouTubers have traveled to Asbury University to see for themselves. People have traveled from all over the country to observe and even participate in what's going on at Asbury. There are many people on one side of things affirming that this is a legitimate move of God, this is revival. Uh, they're trying to stir things up in their own churches, and they're traveling there. I've even seen posts of people saying, hey, I was kind of skeptical, but I went and experienced it for myself, and I can tell you that this is of God, this is a revival, this is legit. Now, on the other side of things, you have people being very skeptical about what's happening. People saying that this is just experience-driven emotionalism and we need to beware and, and they're warning against this type of thing. So that's kind of two very different reactions from Christian social media. I decided to just get in my car and go and check it out for myself and see what's going on. I sat and just sat there for a little while. I closed my eyes. I prayed. I said, Lord, give me eyes to see, give me ears to hear and wisdom to discern truth. Now, I'll give you my own subjective feeling, and that is that it felt very sweet. There was nothing weird going on. It was very calm. Uh, it felt very similar to what I experience at churches across the country every Sunday uh, who are waiting with expectation for a service to start. So as far as I can judge, um, I have no reason to think that God isn't working something really beautifully in the hearts of the students at Asbury. I've had experiences like that, uh, especially when I was younger. Um, I'll be honest with you, coming from a bit of a charismatic background, I've seen this type of thing a lot. So I will admit to you my bias that I come to it with a bit of skepticism because I can't tell you how many 24-hour uh, worship services I took part in and 24-hour, you know, quote-unquote revivals and things like that, were, which really were more just experience-driven. Uh, and But I have no reason to think that what God is working in these students is not real. So that's not really the point of making this video. The point of making this video is that I do have three concerns with how it's been responded to, okay? And the first one is how we define revival. The second one is the social media component. And the third one is the vulnerability when something like this happens, the vulnerability of it being co-opted by something else. One, The first thing I wanna to talk to you about is the good of what I was seeing in this revival, people are praying and praising. What does that say? Okay, so you can see them clapping there and such like. The first thing that I want to say that I thought was very good, very good about the Asbury revival was how people largely were behaving while I was there. How people were behaving largely while I was there. 
quite frankly, I thought that I was going to walk into some NAR uh, absolute monstrosity. I thought that I was going to walk in and see fire tunnels, tongues. I thought I was going to see people slaying in the spirit, flopping in the floor like a fish. And thankfully, I did not see anything like that. Another thing I would tell you here is that uh, the the moderator, the man who was slightly moderating this meeting, uh, he did get up and talk about we need to confess sin before the Lord. And I thought, well, that's I'm for that. That's a wonderful, good thing. I, I believe that's right and good. Uh, he even said things about this meeting is not about us. We want to be down on us and lift up Jesus and I thought, yeah, amen, praise the Lord. This isn't about anybody. This is He wants to make it about the Lord, and I commend the uh, the man who was running that meeting for that. Uh, there was even a segment where they talked about how the blood of Jesus forgives, and uh, I thought that was a good and useful and, and helpful thing. Thank God for that. Uh, I thought that was a blessing. And then also, uh, I want to say this about the music. Uh, the music was charismatic in nature, of course, uh, but it was not uh, filled with wild drum beats. Uh, it wasn't filled with guitar solos. These people weren't jamming for the lamb. They weren't rocking the flock when I was there, per se. One of the negative things that I saw was that there was very little emphasis placed on the Bible while I was there. I did not hear the gospel preached while I was there, uh, which, of course, I believe that's pr the number one accusation, the number one problem that I have so far. Uh, but let me, let me throw this one out there as well. Um, the music that was used in this meeting was very problematic. Uh, let me show you this. Uh, almost, probably in the two hours that I was there, 95% or more of the music that was used was Bethel Hillsong Elevation, Maverick City Music, all that terrible stuff, okay? Many people claim that what is happening at Asbury University is not a genuine revival, considering that many troublesome, fake, and dangerous false preachers, such as Todd Bentley, are somehow involved. For those who don't know who Todd Bentley is, we highly encourage you to watch this video, 16 Preachers Caught Doing Unimaginable Things in the Church. Here's a snippet of what Todd Bentley represents. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, you know, restoration, Rick's here, my first service, uh, you know, God, you want me to punch this guy? And I, it just didn't make sense to me. And I thought, Lord, he's dying. You know, he, he yeah. lost over 40 pounds. So anyways, I punched him in that broken sternum, and he ended up on the ground and just vibrating under the power of God. He gets up, and immediately you could see a change in his face, in his yeah. countenance. And uh, long story short, he was totally healed of cancer. False prophets. And they're really good at what they do, and they have the kingdom of darkness on their side. Thankfully, a courageous man, Justin Peters, confronted him. And Jesus will look at them, and he said, I never knew you depart from me, you workers of iniquity. This man is a worker of iniquity. Which man? You. Is possibly the most urgent of my concerns. And that's the vulnerability of when something like this happens, that it becomes co-opted by movements like the New Apostolic Reformation, or known as the NAR, that believes that the church should be governed by modern-day apostles. And revival is a huge part of how these apostles are going to usher in the end times. And, and um, already, right now, I've seen social media posts where prominent NAR prophets and apostles and other people are heading there somehow. Have reported they're already there at Asbury taking part of this thing. There was a post that was made by a guy named Todd Bentley. Now, Todd Bentley, of course, is a notorious, a notorious uh, NAR preacher, word of faith guy, and he is absolutely atrociously bad. Uh, but uh, he, I just, I am just blown away at some of the foolishness that that man has said over the years. Uh, he actually claimed that he was invited to the meeting, and uh, that's not that's not the case at all. He certainly was not, and the staff at the college assured me that. He wasn't. Uh, matter of fact, I, I showed I showed the lady who was on staff at the church a screenshot of Todd Bentley saying that he was booked for a couple days at this revival, and uh, she assured me that was not true. And she said, uh, "Why would he even come to this?" So that was encouraging to me. Also, uh, uh, I I at I told her I said Greg Locke is supposed to be coming to this meeting, ma'am. Do you know Do you know that? And 
And she said, uh, no, Greg Locke is not a part of anything going on here. She actually groaned when I mentioned the name Greg Locke. So that was a good thing. That was a really good thing. And then after that, uh, I, uh, she, she kind of got real hesitant. She kind of leveled with me. She said this. Uh, she said, Spencer, um, I got to tell you this. Uh, Kenneth Copeland's people showed up the other day, and we actually asked them to leave. And I was like, praise the Lord. Todd Bentley is not within the bounds of Christian orthodoxy. So again, that doesn't, that's not definitive proof that this is not a move of God. Nefarious characters can show up on the scene and it could be a real move of God. Um, That said though, right? I mean, Simon the sorcerer showed up with the apostles ministry and tried to buy, right? So Todd Bentley could have been there because he wants to, you know, I just want to get the power of God so I can use it and get back on the big stage again, get back to my calling. You know, well, I mean, Simon the sorcerer was trying to buy the apostles ability to impart the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And Peter says, may your, may your riches perish with you, right? You're, you're a wicked man. Um, So, so nefarious characters showing up doesn't, definitively discredit something. That's a great point. We should not discredit the entire revival simply because some false teachers attempt to hijack it to draw attention to themselves. Todd Bentley was not invited. He showed up of his own volition, and he is the type of wolf who looks for people to deceive, destroy, and even hurt physically. He's done it in the past. I'm not saying that there's no move of God at all. I'm not saying nothing positive has happened. Um, these things are typically a mixed bag. Uh, it's not so simplistic to say it's all bad or it's all good. Um, Jesus Christ in his earthly ministry, uh, he had Judas as one of his disciples, right? So even the ministry of Jesus, you know, you've got some nefarious figures who are in close proximity to Christ, Jesus Christ incarnate himself. Okay, so um, there's always going to be a mixed bag. Uh, you study, you know, bona fide uh, revivals of the past, and uh, of course there were abuses, and there were um, certain, you know, malicious angles that people were playing, and people who were there that weren't really there because they wanted to seek after God, but rather they were trying to exploit something, this and that and the other. So, um Revivals have a long history of being a complicated thing. There's never been a revival without sin. Um, and, you know, the worst fake revivals that aren't actually revivals, um, even in those cases, it's not to say that, that God in his sovereignty doesn't do at least one good thing. We firmly believe that the Asbury revival started genuinely. Gen Z is the most godless group of people in America. No one can deny that the young college students at Asbury University are having encounters with God due to this revival. Certainly, many false preachers, like Todd Bentley, will be sent by the devil to pervert what God is doing in the hearts of young men and women who are far from God. This is why we must continue to pray for young adults who the secular universities are grooming to hate God and engage in all forms of sexual immoralities. One of the things that I've noticed is, you know, that there are some queer students who are publicly, they publicly identify as being LGBT at Asbury. Um, and they're on the scene in the revival and, and they're saying, we're, we're for it. We like what's going on. Now that, that actually gives me more pause, more hesitation than even Todd Bentley being there. We will continue to pray that gay people come to know the truth and be saved and delivered. With God, all things are possible. When you see the state of our country and the world at large, no one can deny that we need revival. We need a great awakening. We must put Jesus Christ back in his proper place in our lives, schools, churches, governments, and society. If you are new to our channel, please consider subscribing. Enable the bell icon to get notified when we upload new weekly videos. Thanks for your help. The gospel industry is beating down the door. I'm telling you, the guy, they're, 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 they're beating down the door. They want a part of this, and, and they can't have it. They can't have it. They're not getting it because this is not about them. This is for, Jesus is here, and God is using those young kids, man young students that work here and staff member people that you don't even know in a small town in kentucky so this is the thing i encourage you guys to pray for the continued stewardship of this movement of this revival 
and in other places because God is doing it without the wolves. And I'm not saying all of them are wolves. With their managers and all these, the industry is money. It's a business, folk. They want in, bro. They want in. They want in bad. But these guys says, leave your agenda at the door. I heard it out of his own mouth. They say, you can come. Leave your agenda at the door. It's real. And they're not playing no games, man. So pray for them. Hey. What are y'all here doing, man? Handing out Bibles. Handing out Bibles, right? Yeah, free man. Free food. Free food over. Hey, free hey. food. Jesus yep. will give us free yeah, food too, man. Right over there. God bless you guys. Stay, stay faithful to hey, Jesus. We will continue to monitor what is happening at Asbury University. One warning sign to look out for is if the gospel of Jesus Christ is not boldly preached. Yes, singing and worshiping are good. Yes, praying is good. But the message of salvation must be boldly proclaimed. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Romans 1, verse 16. We urge every believer in Jesus Christ to use this opportunity to examine their heart. Has your relationship with Jesus Christ grown cold? We want revival to start with us. If you have yet to encounter Jesus Christ, the most significant revival you need now is calling on Jesus to save you. I was definitely a bit skeptical at first just because growing up with my church, we never had anything like this, and so I just wasn't used to the idea of a revival. Um, but the longer it's gone on, I've realized that if God wants it to happen, it's going to happen. My prayer is that this will encourage churches, encourage pastors, encourage disbelievers, um, and just stir up a hunger for the Lord. Because again, it's not, it's not about Asbury, it's about Jesus.